The walls are closing in on Donald Trump. The evidence is so damning, so clear that this could be it. He might not be able to run again. Things are so serious that he might actually have to pay his lawyers. Sound familiar? How many times have we heard something like that since Trump first came to office? We heard it as special counsel Robert Mueller finished his investigation. Obstruction of justice that was done by the president of the United States in real time. There are indictments in this president's future. They're coming. We heard it after Donald Trump's first impeachment when he tried to pressure Ukraine for political dirt on the Bidens. Could they be the words that directly threaten a presidency? Bombshell testimony from a diplomat directly tying the president to Ukraine quid pro quo and rocking his entire impeachment defense. We heard it again after his second impeachment, the one for inciting a deadly assault on the U.S. Capitol. So you think it was an impeachable as offense? I said before Jordan. Oh, sure. Yeah. And, and You'd vote to impeach. I think that, you know, in the... Well, that's if I think it's an impeachable offense, that's exactly what I would do, George. But I'm, I'm not in there. But you want my opinion. That's my opinion. I, I don't I think if if inciting to insurrection isn't, then I don't really know what is. Well, a special counsel investigation and two impeachment trials did not bring legal or political consequences for Trump, despite all the predictions that they would. That's worth keeping in mind this week. On Wednesday, after many legal battles, Trump finally sat for a deposition at the New York Attorney General's office in a civil probe of his business dealings. Trump says he took the Fifth, the Fifth Amendment, which is weird because I'm old enough to remember when he also said this. Taking the Fifth, I think it's disgraceful. The mob takes the Fifth. If you're innocent, why are you taking the Fifth Amendment? Fifth Amendment, Fifth Amendment, Fifth Amendment. Horrible. Horrible. On Tuesday, Republican Congressman Scott Perry said that FBI agent seized his phone. If the name Scott Perry sounds familiar, it might be because he's the one who tried to install an election denier at the top of the Trump Justice Department and then asked for a pardon. And on Monday, FBI agents executed a search warrant, of course, at Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago estate in South Florida. A source familiar tells NBC News that the search was tied to classified information Trump allegedly took with him from the White House after leaving office. The FBI was there for more than nine hours. Trump said that agents broke into a safe on the property. The New York Times says the FBI removed a number of boxes. So there's an impulse to look at the news this week and think that the walls are finally closing in. But there's another way to look at this, a point that former Republican congressman, now never Trumper Joe Walsh, raised on this show on Tuesday. It doesn't matter what the FBI and the Justice Department are after. This will strengthen Trump. Uh, this will uh, look. He was the prohibitive favor to be the Republican Party nominee before. I speak to these people every day. I have not seen them this fired up, this angry and this gung ho to support Trump since Election Day in 2020. Um, they're all behind him. It is entirely possible that an FBI search on his South Florida resort home both does not result in criminal charges, but does end up being a major political boost to Donald Trump come 2024. We have to recognize that. In fact, before we even consider the prospect of Trump's actions maybe finally catching up to him, we need to remember that Donald Trump has a Republican Party, an entire political party that will do anything to defend him and a right-wing media that will amplify that defense. As news of the search warrant came out on Monday, the top House Republican Kevin McCarthy warned Attorney General Merrick Garland that he'd be dragged before Congress if Republicans take control post-November. And on Tuesday, a group of hard-right House Republicans made a pilgrimage to another Trump resort, Bedminster, for dinner. One of those dinner guests with the president or former president, excuse me, Indiana's Jim Banks was on Fox a short time later. To weaponize the Department of Justice in such an un-American way, that outrage is going to lead to a massive turnout of Americans who are, who are going to say, we're not going to take it anymore. We're going to take back our country from Joe Biden, the radical Democrats, and, and those who would abuse their power in such a way. Abuse of power. The White House says they didn't even know about the search warrant. That's not the only ridiculous claim, though, that you might have seen on Fox this week. What the FBI is probably doing is planning evidence, which is what they did during the Russia hoax. We also have a hunch they doctored evidence to get the warrant. 
That planting evidence line is now everywhere. And this is what Trump's allies are doing, flooding the zone with excrement, as Steve Bannon once put it. They're doing exactly what they've done for years. And Democrats are mostly letting it happen. On Monday night, as this story was just coming out, the Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer spoke with my MSNBC colleague Rachel Maddow. Well, I know nothing about it other than what I've read, like everybody else. So I think it's wise for me to withhold comment until we learn more. I mean, that's fair. Nobody, Republican or Democrat, should be commenting on Justice Department investigations. But then Rachel asked Senator Schumer about that warning that Congressman McCarthy, the House Republican minority leader, made to the attorney general. I know that you don't want to talk about the substance of the matter at no. Mar-a-Lago, but I do want to ask your reaction to what Mr. McCarthy has Look, said. Look, I think we don't, none of us know the facts and any comments are premature. Wait, why would you not answer that question? Why not say something about the Republicans and the way they're handling this? Why are top Democrats, including members of the Biden administration, not, for example, defending the FBI against these attacks from Trump's allies in the Republican Party? Why are they not calling out the party that claims it's on the side of law enforcement, but shows every day that they're not? Why are they not pointing out loudly, daily, that the modern Republican Party is now on record this week saying Donald Trump is above the law? that he's an untouchable king. When we think about all the times that Trump has escaped legal and political consequences, we cannot forget how his allies in Congress and on Fox worked the refs, how they dug up anything they could to undermine any investigation, how they exploited Democratic Party silence. Because, of course, nature abhors a vacuum, as does the media, sadly. Their cynical and dishonest playbook is not new. So when will Democrats finally call out Republicans on it? Joining us now to talk about the legal side of things is Andrew Weissman. He's the former head of the criminal fraud section at the Justice Department. He was also a leading member of special counsel Robert Mueller's team. He's now an NYU law professor and legal analyst for NBC News and MSNBC. Andrew, thanks for coming back on the show. Uh, you have this narrative now on right wing media that the DOJ searched Mar-a-Lago without explaining it to the American people. They did it without Trump lawyers present, et cetera, et cetera. So I want to begin by asking you about two things the search warrant, uh, and the penalty for this whole classified document thing. Because we know as President Trump aggressively pursued more than 300 cases of leaks of classified information, um, he used the Espionage Act, he upped the sentencing. Is that something that could now hurt him? And what could we learn about from a search warrant if we saw it that would help us understand what's going on here? Great questions. Um, you know, there's so much that we don't no. Um, but what we do know for sure is that the government presented evidence to a judge that established probable cause that a crime was committed and that the evidence of that crime would be found at Mar-a-Lago. Let's leave aside the conspiracy theories that the judge was you know, somehow not acting independently or that there was planting evidence. I mean, it's just zero evidence of any yes. of that. And um, and I'd like to be um, tethered to some reality in discussing this, yes. um, even even if that doesn't happen uh, on the on the far uh, on the far right. Um, in terms of what is going on, um, you know, this is sort of what I would say is educated speculation is that there has to be evidence that the attorney general believes is of such importance from a national security perspective that was in Mar-a-Lago and needed to be recovered, that um, that the representations being made by the former president and his lawyers uh, was uh, believed not to be true, and that there was information that was of such singular importance to the national security of the United States that it had to be recovered and could not risk uh, becoming public. Having been in the government and been the FBI general counsel, I can assure you that there is information like that that is incredibly singular. And the idea that somebody who leaves government would take that information is beyond the pale. I mean, everybody knows when you leave yeah. the government, you take nothing with you. Zero. Um, it's not your evidence. So it is the government evidence. 
Yeah, and he could have declassified stuff if he wanted to, but we don't know if he has. You've been critical, Andrew, of how Hillary Clinton was investigated over her emails, the way that the commentary that came with it from Jim Comey. Uh, you supported the guidelines that, you know, you shouldn't talk about the target of an investigation. Those are DOJ guidelines. Um, although, of course, the Hillary Clinton thing happened just before a presidential election. I get all that, and I get the guidelines in theory. But right now, in the real world, you have Donald Trump revealing that he has a search warrant, but he won't actually show us the search warrant. We have right-wing media floating conspiracy after conspiracy about the search. Given these conditions, do you still believe the Justice Department, the Biden administration, should remain silent, that no one should come forward and defend the FBI search or the FBI itself? That feels like unilateral disarmament. Well, there's no question that what happens, whether it's the special counsel uh, investigation, where it certainly happened in spades, is that you have an asymmetry of rules. Um, the government is does not talk about its investigation for two reasons. One, because it can undermine the investigation to talk about um, what you're doing. And two, to protect the civil liberties of those people under investigation. In other words, the reason we're, um, people, including myself, were so critical of Jim Comey was that you don't give your personal views of somebody who has not been charged. Um, that is not the role of the Justice Department. Um, so you have this asymmetry. Here, I do think that there is an argument to be made that what frees up the Justice Department to talk at least somewhat about what they are doing and to some extent to justify um, at least the parameters of what they're doing, even if it's not the specifics, is that the very yeah. target of the search has publicly revealed the investigation and the search warrant. So the needing to protect the investigation and needing to protect Donald Trump's civil liberties are no longer those paramount interests that animate yeah. that that uh, that policy within the Department of Justice. Um, but having I'm said that, you know, I do think that people in the Department of Justice sort of hang on to trying to make sure they adhere to all of the Justice Department rules because they know they can't be criticized um, if they adhere to those rules, even though it leads to exactly what you're pointing out, which is that one side can vilify people without really getting a response from the government what? itself. As you said, it happened during the Mueller investigation. You were part of that Mueller special team and there was an asymmetry. And I, I feel like we're watching a sequel to the same movie. Um, d let's just uh, switch tack a bit. Donald Trump sat for a deposition Wednesday in the New York AG's investigation into whether he improperly inflated the value of his properties. Trump said he invoked his Fifth Amendment right to avoid self-incrimination. Put aside the hypocrisy of that. We played a clip earlier of how he used to go after Hillary Clinton's people or anyone on their left over Fifth Amendment stuff. Just deal with the actual legality of it. it. In a civil case, Fifth Amendment silent means something different, right? Yeah, absolutely. It can be so, used um, differently. Exactly. In a criminal case, the Fifth Amendment cannot be used against you. In a civil case, a jury is entitled to draw an adverse inference, meaning that the, t that the testimony that you would give um, would be not helpful to your side. Um, and so he's really hurt himself in that civil litigation. Um, you know, one of the things I, I think that's really important to point out is that Donald Trump has a really big mouth in terms of speaking to the media and publicly <laughs> and used yes. to be tweeting and is very good at, be, at being vocal in fora where there's no criminal liability. But he has scrupulously avoided testifying yeah. either in the grand jury, uh, giving a deposition to the New York attorney general. He refused to meet with the special counsel's office in an interview or to go to the grand jury. So yeah. he um, and even in the impeachment, he said he didn't do anything wrong, but he refused to give a statement to Congress. And the reason for it's that is all of those fora are ones where he would expose himself to criminal liability if he merely repeated <laughs> the lies that he and says to the public. And to the P word, to perjury. Um, Andrew, last question. I want to get your reaction to some recent comments from President Obama's uh, former Attorney General, Eric Holder, because a lot of people, whenever I say on this show, why hasn't the DOJ been more aggressive? Why hasn't Garland and Trump? People say, you don't know how the DOJ works. You're just a journalist. Let them do their job. Here's a former AG. Listen to what he said. Very interesting. So when people say, you know, how do we prove Trump's intent? I just kind of look like, are you kidding me? You know, 
find me 11,780 votes, just say that it's corrupt, I'll take care of the rest. Just, I mean, there's other stuff, but just those two nuggets right there. Uh, you're looking at a conspiracy to obstruct, conspiracy to defraud, you know, right there. I don't know, Lanny Brewer, are you here? Where? There he is, the former head of the criminal division of the United States Department of Justice. Uh, So, Lanny, would we bring this case? We would bring it in a minute. There we go. We would bring it in a minute. Andrew, do you agree with that argument? Are you surprised to see Eric Holder speaking out so forcefully on this issue? Uh, I'm not. I do think, you know, we're all now, you know, not in the government. We are entitled to, to um, give our views. I have been critical of the pace in which the Justice Department has acted in the past. Um, but I do think that um, the attorney general, as of a couple of weeks ago in his interview with Lester Holt, said all the right things. And I think that we're seeing up to and including the search that the attorney general had to have approved, that he actually has the backbone uh, to do this investigation. And um, I agree with Eric Holder that this is a case that could be made. Um, and uh, this is one I know that you started by talking about all the ways in yeah. which Donald Trump has dodged bullets. But I really do think that this is one where it's pretty easy to see that this case is going to be righteous and can be made by the Justice Department. And I think Eric Holder um, has good comments, but that I think the attorney general has shown that he has the backbone to bring the case. Yeah.